and welcome back to TGTV and more specifically ladies and gentlemen welcome back to RPM Technic. Today we are off to see my GT3 RS 997.2 which is inside and we've found something very very grisly. It's bad. It's actually really bad. We're going to get into that but I just wanted to show you this that I came here with. This is the Cupra for mentor that I have been dailying for the past couple of months. You can see it's been very well used as a daily. I'm gonna spin the camera around. This is from the kind people at Cupra UK Media. I will be doing a full living with video on this car. It did have a fairly mucky journey recently, hence the state of it at the moment. But it's in a wonderful satin blue paint uh, and it's a fantastic car. They're not paying me to be nice about it, but I have truly dailyed this car and I've truly found out what it's like to live with and I'm actually super, super impressed. And it actually wouldn't be off the cards for something I actually paid for with my own money. It's been fantastic to borrow this car. I will have to give it back very, very sadly, um, but I'm a massive, massive fan of that. So shout out to Cupra for the kind loan. Right then, let's talk hidden nasties on cars. It's extremely important before you buy a car, you check it out fully with Car Vertical. All of you will have heard of Car Vertical by now. It's the one-stop shop to check out a car before you buy, and actually, you can check out a car that you already own to see whether or not there's any hidden nasties. Things that will pop up, things like outstanding finance, mileage discrepancies, recalls, crash damage, which is particularly important for what we've got inside, and actually, crash damage has shown up on the Car Vertical report. I didn't use Car Vertical before I bought this car. I bought this car years ago, and I didn't use car vertical before I bought the car. If I had have done, I would have seen exactly what has happened to the car because this is a historic incident. I've since run the report and the damage is on there. It's recorded on there. The mileage is fine. There's outstanding finance, which is mine, but not anyone else's. There's no outstanding recalls and everything on there is tickety-boo. However, we've got some crash damage. You've also got its previous license plates and all sorts of in-depth information. If you want to check out a car that you're looking to buy or that you already own, use the code on the screen right there TG it's nice and simple and you will receive a discount it's a really really incredible service most of you will have heard of it already before but if you just type in the reg into the website you will get a full report on your car it's so simple it really is simple even a baboon like me has managed to pull up a report and often you'll even get photos of the damage on there as well so it's really really worth checking out I would not buy a used car now without running a car vertical report on it. And it's super, super useful to actually do it on your existing collection as well, see if there's anything that needs your attention. Use code TGE, they're huge supporters of the channel. It helps support the channel if you use the code, so please do that. Anyway, let's head into RPM Technic then, have a little look around, and then we're gonna get into my crash damage GT3 RS. And no, this isn't clickbait in the fact that it's not crash damage. There's genuinely a smashed up GT3 RS in there. Uh, and the thumbnail, is a picture of the actual car. In we come then. They've always got such nice bits here, RPM Technic. Love the guys and girls here. And if, in case you think I'm being nice because I get freebies, I don't. I pay my bills here, so don't think that I'm just being unnecessarily nice about things to get free stuff. Uh, that is, well, it's a 959. I was gonna say it's a joke. That is absolutely bonkers. I love 959s. That is so, so cool. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Not often you see one of those, ladies and gents. We've also got this Carrera S993, which I adore. A friend of mine actually bought this before he realized he actually wanted a modern 911. Um, so quickly allowed RPM to have it back. Stupid sod, I told him not to get rid of it. Um, unbelievable. Uh, polar silver, I don't think they had GT silver at this point. Polar silver with uh, basically Bordeaux interior. Lovely, lovely car. And being the S, you've obviously got the wide arches on there as well. Let's go through then, find my GT3 RS and get into what on earth has happened. So here she is then, my GT3 RS up on the ramp. You last saw this car, actually in the same position, uh, just with all the bits attached to it, like wheels and whatnot. So we have got some bad news. As I mentioned in the intro, this car has had an accident, ladies and gentlemen, and it has been discovered. I'm gonna talk through, with the help of an expert, what on earth is going on, how bad the damage was, and the costs involved in it. It all looks very serious, doesn't it? It's all quite stressful. I must admit, when the, when the pictures came through, 
from Lydia here. I was a little bit stressed out. So we are going to get the help of an expert. We're gonna talk through what is going on with this car. So we've got Dan here. Dan has uh, drawn the short straw. Everyone else run off and he was the last one standing. Uh, so he's been pulled into the video here, uh, RPM Technic. Um, so with this car then, we did some research. Before we get into this, we're gonna get itemize these things. We did some research and this car, back in 2010, actually hit a petrol pump and ripped up the front end. I'll put some images of that on the screen right now, but that explains what has happened here, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said before, if you use car vertical, you will avoid buying cars that have previously been crashed, have outstanding finance, uh, outstanding recalls, mileage discrepancies, and all the other nasty stuff that you really don't want when buying a car. So make sure you use my code on the screen to get involved with that and avoid buying a car that is absolutely screwed. Okay, Dan, car vertical aside, yep. should we talk through some bits then? Okay. What is going on? So we've obviously had an impact to this corner, which has caused some issues. First thing, I wanna just point out this in here. You can see a little mark up there, right in the center of the screen. That is due to a shock breaking and hitting the inside of the wheel arch. Right, go. I'm gonna point at the floor then and you can talk us through it because I'm a moron. So basically this shock has been snapped previously yep. and the original spring's been fitted back on. And you, right. if you can see that from video. It is slightly, yeah, you leaning, can see that. Leaning to one side. Yeah, that is leaning. Excellent. So they fitted the original, they've replaced the shock when it was repaired. It was an insurance, repair, uh, it was an insurance job uh, repairing this. Um, and then they put the original spring back on. That's very bizarre, because that's the expensive bit. These aren't actually that much money. No, and a damaged top hat as well. Damaged top see. hat. So all this stuff then is gonna have to be um, replaced. We are, well, we can see a new one over there, ready to roll. Um, we're gonna be replacing that. So rough cost then, that's gonna be fine because that's brand new. How much is a new spring, roughly? A pair, 600 quid, say? 600 quid, do you have to buy a pair? They come as a pair, yes. Oh good, perfect. No bargains with Porsche. <laughs> okay, right, coming on then. That's an easy fix though. Nothing too much to worry about this because this had the impact. Obviously, um, the hub's been replaced previously. The hub's been replaced. What about this arm? Is any of this new? Doesn't look, no. And the okay. date stamps are original on the arm. Okay, fine. So anything that was serious then has been replaced, but we are doing the spring just for uh, just for good measure. Right, what else have we got here? So What's this? Moving over to the subframe, where it's, where it's accident happened, it snapped the edge of the subframe off and been repair, re welded back together. Ah, oh, nice. Very nice. I must admit, I did get this on WhatsApp from, from Lydia and she showed me both sides. She said, you need a new subframe. And I uh, nearly spat out my dinner. I thought, well, that's gonna be thousands and thousands. Um, that, actually, is not a difficult fix. These are pretty much readily available in stock with Porsche. And I thought it was gonna have another zero on that. How much do you reckon that is? It was 800. 800 quid, there we go. I thought it was gonna be worse, yeah. So that actually just swapped straight out. And arguably these things are designed not to be crashed, but when they are crashed, they're designed to break. So it doesn't actually bend the frame of the car, which we will get onto about frame bends, but nice, relatively easy fix. And that's sort of a couple of working days in stock with Porsche. Brilliant, brilliant company to be fair. Coming on then, because it still gets pretty bad. So the opposite side of the car that didn't have the accident has actually got a bent shock, Perfect. which you can see. You can actually see that in the film. Yeah, oh dear, good. Um, so that's gonna need a new shock along with its new spring that goes on there. We're not messing around. We are gonna just do it all properly and put it back to brand new. Uh, how much is new shock? 600. 600 quid as well. So it's starting to add up, ladies and gentlemen. So what we may well do then to replace this shock, I think this is about 600 quid, maybe 800 quid from Porsche to get you one of those. Um, but think what I might do is just put KWs round the whole car. They're doing amazing work, uh, particularly with Crow GTs, but they are renowned for their Porsche suspension. So I potentially will be doing KWs all the way around. So stay tuned on that. We're just assessing uh, stock levels, how long it'll take and a few admin details. And then we'll work it out. But that shock is very definitely bent and it's going to get replaced either way. But my preference would be for KWs. 
Um, as mentioned before as well, we are doing some stuff with the brakes. The brakes don't work as well as they do on my turbo, um, which could be down to a number of things. Um, so we're replacing the lines, um, obviously they're sort of putting new fluid and whatnot in them, uh, deglazing the brake pads as well, because I don't want to be replacing the pads. There's loads of life left in them. I think they're just a little bit glazed and uh, they're, they're, that should help, should it not? Hopefully. Hopefully. We hope. Um, Save some money. Because new pads are for a pair roughly. Yeah, 500 pounds. 500 quid. Yeah. So we're going to try that first anyway. I may as well try and save some money on that if I can. Because as I say, there's loads of life left in the pads, but they might just be glazed. Whatever that means. I'm using terminology that I don't actually understand. I'm just repeating what I've been told. Um, we've also got some other bits here, which is um, going to be brand new and nice, and nice and fresh. What have we got there? So front top mounts, both sides. Nice and transverse arm brake ducts. Perfect. And they're your rear top mounts over there. Okay, and they're being replaced as well. Yeah, just because of wear and tear. Wear and tear, nice. Yeah, may as well do everything properly whilst we're in there. Um, anything else to worry about that we've found here? Oh, the frame. The fr <laughs> little grin, <laughs> little grin. Um, so talk me through what you found then, how uh, you, you're feeling about the frame. What, what's the discovery? Interesting. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny at all. Um, uh, so what, what had been done then? Because the frame is bent. Possibly. We're not 100% sure because yeah. there are so many bent parts attached to the, the frame of the car. Mm. It might be okay once all the new parts are fitted. Yeah. It will hopefully G out straight and be okay. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I have a plan for if the frame is bent. Um, and actually with these cars, we we're discussing earlier on your sort of latter cars, I think the 992 is aluminium chassis. Yes, and um, steel. These are steel. So if this car is bent, A, it's not gonna be that bent. Uh, I need to stop saying bent. Um, but B, because it's steel, you can, um, you can bend it back quite easily. They're not too bad to chuck on a jig. No. Um, it's something you guys can sort out. Um, I've obviously got H&L motors, which I've booked in loosely to do some paint on the front and some other bits and bobs. So that'll be a job for down the line, but we will see whether or not the frame is bent once all the new parts get put in. New subframe hasn't arrived yet. That's why we haven't been showing that. <laughs> you did actually say that you, you drove it and you said it does actually drive really well. It drives straight. Yeah, before, before seeing all of this damage, I drove it and it drove fine. Yeah. Which is incredible, but it did. It's had a, it's had a solid bodge on it, whoever's done it. Yeah. And actually, um, it was adjusted to be in a different hole on this side um, to be on the other side. Uh, just, I think, to account for some bending somewhere along the line. But drive straight. No, uh, doesn't track off in any direction. Very, very good. I'm excited to get it back there. I was saying to the guys here, this is probably my favorite car I've ever bought. Got a Carrera GT there. Um, but yeah, I actually prefer driving this to anything I've ever bought before. Very, very exciting. We've also got this here then. This is the power steering rack. I'm saying it like I knew what it was. I've literally just regurgitated what Dan said. Um, it's got a leak, so it's being replaced. Nothing to do with accident damage, I don't think, is it? No, no, it's not. No, it's just uh, general wear and tear. How much is this? This is the, obviously the new part and this is the old part. What are we, what are we talking for that? Porsche, they're about 1,200 quid, but we do recon, which I'm not sure how much is, but. Oh, so you also do like reconditioned parts and like making stuff brand new and yeah, then. Yeah, so this has been sent Amazing. away. Amazing. Sent away to a company that's overhauled it because it was leaking on a previous car. Oh, amazing. So that's so, what will happen to your one. It'll be sent uh, away and overhauled. So I got, I got a little deal on that then. Just put yes. my. Put something through my finger there. Good, well done. <laughs> Can't be trusted with anything. Okay, nice. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. Why I would always take stuff like this to RPM because they've always got a fix for things. You don't always have to be ripped off. There's often a clever way of doing things which enables you to have the same end result, um, but you know, significantly less price. Porsche will always just sell you a new bit. They'll never do anything clever with the parts. They'll just sell you a new part. Um, so yeah, I've probably saved five, 600 quid doing that, which is very nice and very good. So, all that said then, I do actually have a confession to bring to your attention. Um, I knew about all this. I knew the car had been crashed. I knew it before I bought the car, and I bought the car as a Cat D knowingly. I got a really, really, really good price on this car. It was 8,000 miles, and I knew the damage. I knew people that knew the car. I knew kind of, not quite the extent of that. I knew there'd be probably some surprises along the way. Uh, that's not as bad as I thought it might have been. And the plan was always to do this video and a little series, bring it back up to OEM. So I've been a little bit sneaky there, a little bit cheeky, 
done a big, big dollop of clickbait, um, but you expect no less on this channel. And ultimately, these cars have got to pay their way. They've got to bring in the numbers. They've got to bring in the brands. And if they don't, um, the whole thing falls apart. This channel is a business. It's a business I love, and I absolutely adore these cars. And it's something that I never thought I'd ever be able to do. And doing videos like this and just being a little bit conservative um, with the truth on occasion like this, just being a bit cheeky, just kind of helps grease the wheels of industry. So I do apologize for that. I realize that a load of you won't even get this far. So a load of you will just think that I've bought a crash car unknowingly. And I'll be open about it on Instagram and stuff like that and in future videos as well. So um, no one will be left in the dark. So overall, I'm very happy. I'm excited to get this back brand new and ready to roll. I did intend to do this video about a year ago, but I just got busy. So huge, huge thank you to the guys here at RPM Technic. I really, really, really recommend them. There's loads of stuff here that I really can't show you, load of customer cars. And of course, a massive thank you to Car Vertical for supporting this video and future videos going forward. You'll be hearing a lot more about Car Vertical. And if you're buying a car, make sure you run through the reg plate with Car Vertical before you buy and you use the code TGE. You couldn't have made it any simpler. Code TGE will save you some money on your report and you'll be able to find out the hidden nasties. And should I have bought this car thinking that it wasn't a Cat D and not knowing about what had gone on, I would have picked up all of that because I've run it through and it had the damage on there. So it definitely, definitely works and it's a fantastic resource. So make sure you use the code TGE. You'll be supporting the channel and you'll also be finding out all the hidden info about your potential purchase. For now, I will leave. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.